Hi, I'm Ellen Manning, and I'm here talking to Steve Smith, a local artist living in Gulfport, Florida. Hi, Steve. Um, Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> would you care to tell us a little bit about yourself and perhaps how you started drawing and when your interest began in, in uh, drawing and artwork? Geez, well, I guess, you know, when I was a little kid, like most people start drawing when they're kids. My parents found that they could give me a pencil or crayons and paper, and I'd you know, wouldn't give them any problems. So I drew a lot when I was a child, and I still do. And I paint, and I make my own postage stamps. Well, do you have any stories you can share with us about perhaps something that might have inspired you when you were younger to, to do the kinds of things you do now, or? Well, inspiration, I'd probably have to give uh, Mad Magazine great, uh, great grades for inspira inspiring me. I found out a lot about American culture, the culture in which I grew up, of course, through Mad Magazine, before I even knew what Mad Magazine was parodying, I would see uh, the cartoon of Melvin and the Apes, and then later on I'd find out about Tarzan and the Apes and stuff. So parody has always been a real important part of my early uh, upbringing. I just would draw and draw and draw and draw. Uh, one time in... Um, in second grade, I was drawing on my on my envelope, um, my lunch money. My mom gave me my lunch money to go to school at Pasadena Elementary School. And after I took my lunch money up, I stole the envelope. I was drawing on the envelope because just you know, there's hours and hours in school when kids have nothing to do except entertain themselves. So I was entertaining myself drawing <coughs> pictures of people, and I had recently started drawing people with their without clothes on. I my parents had art books around the house and. A lot of, you know, the famous sculptures and paintings are of nudes. And I was, you know, second grade. I was seven years old. So I, I was drawing these little pictures of people without any clothes on, and the teacher found my drawing, decided it was pornography. I mean, these people were not, I mean, they were just dancing around. They were not interacting in any kind of a sexual way, but because they didn't have clothes on, the teacher thought it was smut. Mm. And called my sister who was in third grade who had been in the second grade class the year before it was like teacher's pet come over and is this look like something your your brother would draw yeah it looks like steve's drawing and i had not claimed it wasn't mine i mean it was obviously my drawing because he <laughs> call, didn't call my mother after school to come get me and to have a talk with her and fortunately my mom uh defended me and said yeah what's well, always so drawing people with got their clothes on so what you know what's the big deal <laughs> Years and years later, I started painting, and I, the style that I uh, was working in was called photorealism, where you start with a photograph and work from there, trying to keep it very, very hyper-realistic. The past several years, I've been making my own postage stamps, which is um, a lot of fun, and it, it it 
it gets back to that parody thing because what I do is I take United States postal issues and do parodies of them. Mm-hmm. I've just finished um, a parody of the triangular stamps, the first U.S. Postal Service triangle stamps. And what types of parodies have you come up with? Well, for that one, I've come up with two so far, and I've got ideas for more. I've got a, a triangle things just going like this. <laughs> um, but the first thing that came to mind was the Bermuda Triangle, mm-hmm. because it's a triangle. And it's such a well-known triangular phenomenon, the Bermuda Triangle. And then um, I thought of the Tampa Triangle. I'd heard about this guy's book that had um, called the Tampa Triangle a Dead Zone. And I haven't read it. I don't know anything about the book, but I just like the title. And it was another mm-hmm. triangle. And it sounds like this guy's saying that the Tampa has something in common with the Bermuda Triangle. And so I did a Tampa Triangle stamp. And the, the image I came up with that... Um, is the Skyway Bridge when it fell down. What, about 1979 or 1980? Yeah. Um, I remember that happening. I remember that very well. <laughs> and so I have an image of, of the, the bus going over the bridge. And um, how, do you, how do you, um, are your stamps hand-drawn or do you do them with a computer? Well, when I first started doing stamps years and years ago, I hand-drew each one on the envelope. Uh, again, because I don't like to work that hard, I, I eventually went to... Um, doing reproductions. Uh, first black and white Xeroxes and I'd make a sheet of them and then I'd color in each one when I was getting ready to use it, put it on the envelope. Oh, and by the way, I, I don't use these stamps instead of real stamps on my envelopes. I use the real stamp, put the parody stamp next to it, just like an Easter seal or something. I mean, it's, I'm not trying to defraud the government. Good thing to make sure it's, <laughs> it's clear. You don't want the feds after <laughs> For you. 32 cents, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, um, and I found out about color Xeroxing, you know, some years ago, a decade or more ago. And I've been lately, once now that I've I started using a computer a few years ago as an art tool, and now I take computer files on a disk to a place that has their computer hooked up to their Canon laser color copier. They do great um, color printouts, which I then perforate on this converted sewing machine. I've removed the bobbin casing so that there's no interference. This hypodermic, uh, veterinary hypodermic syringe in place of the regular sewing needle, and I perforate them that way. Just in February, I was invited to go out to San Francisco to a show of artists displaying their and selling their um, their stamps, their artist stamps. It's it's a, a, a term of art. Artist stamp run together, one word. How do you get your stamp art out into the public? Do you have anything that, that, that you sell to people for a certain amount of money that where they can get your stamps or find out what you're doing? How, how do you promote this to the world? <laughs> well, I've got a website, and maybe at the end of the program we can put out, you know, put a little graphic on with a website address. Um, I have subscribers that, that pay me a certain amount of money, and I give them six my next six issues of stamps that I produce. Before the triangular stamp, the most recent uh, government issue stamp that I parodied was the endangered species stamp, hmm. which has um, 20, I think, different endangered animals pictured on it. And so I did the endangered feces. <laughs> well, how appropriate for such an <laughs> anal retentive guy to be doing as anal to be doing an endangered feces stamp. Well, it's true. Before, um, my biggest success in the, um, in the artist stamp 
sales category has been my, my parody of the Olympic stamps. They had um, a sheet of 20 different Olympians uh, issued last summer that had um, the different, the javelin thrower and the different... I remember the volleyball player, windsurfer. Well, I did, instead of the Olympic <clears throat> Games, I did the naked games because, <laughs> well, because I could, because I can do anything I want. <laughs> The general love stamp was so cute. Um, they, the government or the postal service took uh, Raphael's one of Raphael's little love angels off of I'm not sure which one of his paintings, but you know, a beautiful painting. And they, by the time they got finished with it, it really looks just like really cutesy stuff. So I made the love and lust angels, <laughs> and I got one of the angels grabbing the other one. You can't see where the grabbing is going on because. <laughs> The angels are cut off right about here, but one of them's like going like, ah, like that. And that's... that's was, was there another parody on the... Uh, yes, but I'm not going to tell you about the other one. Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a couple years ago, they issued it, the post office issued it almost at the same time, within a month or two of each other anyway, the Richard Nixon stamp and the Marilyn Monroe stamp. And I was just smitten with both these stamps. They were great. It's a new direction for the post office. It's, it's the beginning of this whole new wonderful world of postal absurdity. Your face <laughs> on a postage stamp you know, for 50 bucks. No, um, so I combined the Richard Nixon and the Marilyn Monroe stamp together mm. and made a Marilyn Nixon stamp that um, is quite striking. And last year, the Postal Service issued a stamp um, classic comics, uh, about 20 different old comic strips. They had to be, I think, at least 50 years old to be in the running. They had Blondie and um, Gasoline Alley and all these things. And I parodied each one with my self-portrait or in the case when when there was um, more than one person involved, I would often uh, put my sweetheart um, in the picture too. Can you give us some examples of some of those stamps? Well, sure. <laughs> um, well, Dick Tracy is, is, is the one I put on the envelope as well as this is one of the stamps, but Dick Tracy's always that stern profile, you know, like this, and he's um, talking into his wrist radio, I think, like this, and, and so the parody of me is, instead of Dick Tracy talking to his wrist radio, it's Steve Smith <laughs> thumbing his nose. <laughs> and so the two stamps interrelate when you put them on the envelope together. And then for Little Orphan Annie, I did my sweetheart Ellen. Little, little Orphan Ellen, and I'm the dog, Sandy. Barf! <laughs> and, and your sweetheart is Little Orphan Ellen? Yes. Ah. How would you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably enough of that, don't you think? Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, Steve. It's been great talking to you, and we hope to see your artwork all over the place very soon and in the mail. So, in the mail. It's the, the reality check is in the mail. In the mail. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>